Good morning. Before we begin Mass, we would like to introduce the final um, <clears throat> part to the Mass setting we've been introducing uh, during Lent and Easter, which is the Lamb of God. So um, we will sing through the whole thing, and on the second repeat, I would just ask if you can try to sing along. Welcome to St. Mark Church. Today's second collection is for our St. Mark School. As we pre prepare to enter the holy sacrifice of the Mass, please silence the ringers on your cell phones. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our presider for this celebration is Father Tom. Our opening hymn can be found in the Red Worship Hymnal, number 494. All hail the power of Jesus' name, number 494 in the Red Worship Hymnal. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead to destroy death and restore life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, you give us the commandment to love one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your love open for us the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, <coughs> forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Adaliah. From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Your name forever, my God. 
reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> So John, the author of the book of Revelation, had a vision of a new heaven and a new earth. As he says, the former heaven and earth had passed away. And he continues, God will wipe away every tear. There shall be no more death, mourning, or weeping. John could only say this because of the Paschal mystery, the death and resurrection of Jesus which we celebrate through Easter and at every Eucharist. Is this a vision, a revelation that we Christians today, or Christians of any age, count on? Or what non-believers might call pie in the sky? I have the news on in the background when I'm at home, no matter what I'm doing, and I'm not always paying close attention to the television or the radio, but they are constantly seeping through me. A lot of horrors, a lot of tragedy. And I know we should take a break from media once in a while, and I do. There's always importance to spend time in prayer and silence and meditation and contemplation. I do that, but I'll admit maybe not enough. I don't want to risk being out of touch, not for fear of missing something, but being in touch with what's going on in the world, no matter the misery, is at the heart of being a disciple of Jesus. We are on the fifth Sunday of Easter, celebrating the Paschal Mystery, that which took place on the first Easter. Every Sunday is a celebration of Easter, as well as every Mass, because we make present to ourselves and ourselves to the mystery we call the Paschal Mystery. But importantly, we do that not just as observers, but as participants in Christ's own dying and rising, which must become our own, if we want to say we are his followers. So look at the Gospel today. When Jesus left the Last Supper, Jesus knew that his greatest suffering was to begin very soon. It was suffering out of love for humankind, the same suffering God the Father chose to endure for our salvation because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are inseparable. And what one does, they all do. Jesus, pouring out his blood for us on the cross, handed his life over for the sake of sinners, not for the just and the self-righteous. Jesus Christ died for us sinners. In this, God was and still is glorified. That is, God is most perfectly revealed in the sacrifice of Jesus, and Jesus' nature as God is also revealed to us. And our own sharing in God's divinity is revealed when we live as Jesus himself did, pouring ourselves out in love for others. As John would write in another book of the Bible, God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God. Agape is the Greek word for that kind of love. God's love, which is total self-gift. Totally giving oneself for the sake of the other. Not for any personal gain, but for the sake of the other. Jesus loved even Judas as his passion was unfolding. Jesus dipped the morsel into the dish and gave it to Judas before sending him out into the darkness of the night. In this, Jesus shared the Eucharist with Judas, knowing he would betray him. Jesus loved Judas and all sinners to the very end. And because of that, new life for all sinners and for us is possible. We believe with the ancient church that the Eucharist is not a reward for the righteous, but medicine for sinners. Paul and Barnabas had great success in preaching the gospel in those early days of the church. But Paul was very clear as we hear in the first reading today saying, 
we will need to pass through many hardships. Following Jesus is impossible without picking up the cross and following him. Facing the suffering in the world and not turning our backs, but freely entering to it and helping those who suffer is the mission of the church. When we listen deeply to people who suffer, we become one family. Their struggles become our own, and we will be impelled <clears throat> to join them in confronting the evil that causes their suffering. This is how we welcome the coming of the new heaven and the new earth, and a world transformed through solidarity and love. So then we could say along with Jesus in this gospel, God is revealed and glorified in us. God is revealed and glorified in the church and in the world. And we are fully living out our vocation to be disciples of Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We give voice to our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers, confident in the one who makes all things new. For the church, that we may manifest the selfless love of Christ in the way we treat one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of confidence in prayer for all those discerning the vocations as priests, sisters, and brothers, especially to priesthood within the Archdiocese of Baltimore and religious life within the Trinitarian order, that they will be faithful to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peoples and nations may put aside their differences and disagreements and work toward creating a new earth without pain or tears. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grow the food we eat, that they may be blessed with good weather and favorable conditions 
as they nurture the budding life in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's grace and a spirit of reconciliation prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are graduating this spring as they celebrate their achievement and prepare for new challenges ahead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our prayer community may always open the door of faith to those searching for God, searching for meaning, and searching for a home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, and for George Abinjan, whom at this Mass we remember in a special way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked for our prayers, those on our parish prayer list, and the intentions we hold close in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, your Son modeled a selfless love to his disciples and calls us to love one another in turn. Listen to the prayers of those whom you love and of those who love you, and grant them through the same Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, these things which we ask in his name. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are prepared, please join in singing number 602 in the Red Worship Hymnal. Lord of all nations, grant me grace. Number 602 in the Red Worship Hymnal. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, <clears throat> it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know you in your truth, we may make it ours by our worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought forth the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. There 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing our communion hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, on page 588 in the red worship hymnal. Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, page 588.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Our announcements for this weekend are as follows. All are invited to join in praying the rosary on Monday evenings at 6 p.m. in Mary's Prayer Garden. This is a very family-friendly time of prayer. On Thursday, May 19th, we will encounter Jesus during our monthly time of Eucharistic adoration and prayer with praise and worship music. Join us at 7 p.m. in the chapel. Please note that our last Children's Liturgy of the Word for this session will be next Sunday, May 22nd at the 9 a.m. Mass. We will resume again in September. This is exciting. Donut Sunday is coming back. Yes, you heard correctly. Beginning on Sunday, June 12th, Trinity Sunday, Donut Sunday will return after both the 7.30 and 9 a.m. Masses. Help is needed, so please call Ona in the parish office to join this sweet ministry team. There is an ongoing meal train being gifted to our Trinitarian priests here at St. Mark. Please consider joining in this ministry and sign up through the website link listed in our bulletin or by calling the parish office. Please take home any of the flowers that are in the vestibule of the church. We ask that you leave the flowers in the windows to adorn our space. So vestibule is available, but not the ones in the windows. Please take home a bulletin for more information on these and other parish events. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our going forth hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. It's page 525 in the red worship hymnal, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, page 525. 